is the world coming to an end? That's a question that somebody asked me, um, somebody who's near and dear to me asked me yesterday. Um, we live in the Northeast, and if you, whoever you're watching this video, you haven't haven't heard of what's happening in Canada, the fires all over the all over that country, um, and we are literally, I want to say, maybe a thousand miles, um, maybe a little bit less from when those fires are. And my state, I live in New Jersey. I walk out this morning to go to the gym, and the thumbnail that you see on my video here that was how the sun looked this morning and as i'm recording this video it's even worse you can't see the sun the sun is gone and the smoke is like i live across from a big city and there's a bay and you can always see all the all the boats and you see the the buildings and there's a huge um bridge that crosses from from you know across the water and you can't see any of it. You can't see the bridge. You can't see the boats. You can't even see the, the big city that's right across, the, literally a mile away from us. You can't see any of it. It's it's crazy. I love sitting out in my yard and enjoying my fire pit and just relaxing. And you know, when it comes the smell of smoke, but I say that this smell is, and this smoke is worse than probably any of the fires that I've set behind by my fire pit. It, it's crazy. Anyway, so this person said to me, is the world coming to an end? Um, this person is not safe, so I keep talking to this person about the Lord, which is very important. But uh, that's not what I wanted to um, talk about in this video. Or I actually do towards the end, so stay towards the end because I'm going to share something that ties all this in together. Um, but my main purpose of this video is... Um, as believers, as believers in Jesus Christ, should we gather together, you know, in a church? Should we go to church, basically? I mean, you don't have to be a believer. You could listen to this video, too, because it's going to help you. Should we gather together as believers in the church? Should we go to church? I'm going to read really quickly from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 25. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiness by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us, through the veil that is his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water and pure blood Jesus blood let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and let us consider one another or in order to stir up love and good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some as is the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching i have a couple of bullet points i want to hit on here but first of all for those of you who are uh um shut into your house you can't go out for whatever reason health reason you know whatever it may be if you're shut in this 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 is not completely apply to you. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying this to guilt anybody, uh, but we as believers, if we have the ability to attend a local church, um, and if you're saying there's no good local churches around, um, you really should try to make an effort to see if there is one, or at minimum, follow one online and, and get involved in what they do. You can get involved by, um, by following them online and see all the ministries that they have and the things that they do. But uh, we are to get, so the five points that I want to hit real quick from these six verses that I just read, very powerful. Um, and they're all tied in together. So in one of the things that I want to say is in verse 21, it says, and having a high priest, we have a high priest. Well, who's a high priest? Our high priest is Jesus Christ, of course. And the second thing is our hope. It says on here, um, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. What is our hope? We read in Titus 2, 11 to 15, and it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope 
and what is the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our God, our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's our blessed hope who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works speak these things exhort and rebuke with all th all authority let no one despise you um speaking about this, re this rebuke i'm going to link a video here of a sermon that i just watched from pastor gary hamrick in leedsburg virginia from cornerstone chapel one of my favorite pastors i i say he's probably top five easily easily my favorite is brett mater from um athe creek out in oregon um he's they're both powerful powerful pastors and he gave a message this past sunday and that message was rebuking he was rebuking what's happening in society today what's happening in this country in this world he's rebuking anyway go watch that video so um and then the third point i have here he who promised is faithful well we know the he who he is is jesus christ faithful of what though we know he's faithful of many things, but he's faithful of this. In John chapter 14, verses 1 through 2, 3, we read, Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus says. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. A lot of uh, people who believe in the pre-trib rapture, like I do, use this verse as a defense, these verses as a defense of, you see, that's proof that there's going to be a pre-tribulation rapture because Jesus says, if I go, and he does go when he's crucified and he's he ascends to heaven, and, you know, when um, Pentecost, when he ascends to heaven, um, and then he says, if I go, I prepare a place for you. So he's preparing that place. And he says, and if I go, I will come again and receive you to myself. So where I am, there you may be also. So also it says, talks about where he is, we may be also. Well, if that's in heaven, his father's house, we are going to be there. Okay, so when are we going to be there? Well, not during the millennial reign because we're going to come down and reign with Jesus Christ for a thousand years. So when? So I truly believe that it's during the tribulation period here on earth that when that's when we will be with him and we will return with him in the second coming so anyway, this i'm not trying to debate uh the rapture here so the fourth point that i have is not it says not forsaken the assembly okay not forsaken the assembly why not so that we can exhort exhort one another it says that so we can exhort one another well what is exhort mean what does it mean exhort means to encourage to embolden to cheer to advise the primary the primary seems to be to excite or to give strength spirit or courage how can we do this if we don't gather together if we don't gather gather together how can we do it we can do it to a certain extent because i have a lot of brothers and sisters that have been following my channel they've been following me through the 50-day prayer journey we did and a lot of these videos that i post and we encourage each other they'll send me hey pray for this person or thank you for your videos or they'll they'll teach me some things and we go back and forth so we are exhorting and encouraging each other which is beautiful but it's not the same if you don't do it in person. At least that's my take. Um, I just left my, my church that I was attending for 13 years. I left um, right after Easter. And um, I was looking for another church. And um, the very next Sunday. Because I know how important it is to attend a church if you can. And so the very next Sunday, I, I went online. I looked for one. I said, oh, maybe this one. And I my daughter and I went. And... When we left the church, the, after our first service, we just looked at each other and we smiled. And we're like, yep, this is it. Why? Because from the moment we walked in, we were exhorted. We were encouraged. We were greeted with love. With people that don't even know us, but they know that we're part of the same body. And how beautiful it is. And um, this past Sunday, we, we, uh, we started the... They have two class. They have, we have to do two classes for new members, and we're gonna commit to this church. And it seems beautiful. All the things that they do, and we love it. It's like it's so much unity in this church. At least from our first impression of what we see, 
going there for the last two months. Um, so anyway, so that's why it's important to attend the church so you can exhort each other, you can help each other and, and things like that. And the fifth point, the final point that I want to make, which is going to tie into the beginning of this video, is, and it says, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Well, what day? The day of the return of the Lord. Well, we know before the return of the Lord that this world is going to be upside down. And it's going to turn crazy. So I wrote here, based on everything that's transpiring around the world, and if you don't know what's happening, then you need to wake up. You can find countless faith-based and news channels on YouTube to bring you up to speed on what's going on. With each passing day, it seems like the, world, like the day is nearer and nearer. As you see the day approaching, as that day is nearer and nearer. So that person said to me yesterday, because of the fires and the smoke and how we're, I'm literally a thousand miles away from where these fires are, how everything is just, you know, um, just coming down, how it smells, is the world, they said to me, is the world coming to an end? And I said, I said to that person, I said, um, no, not really, but this could be just a sign. So we know, Jesus tells us in the Olivet Discourse, discourse about all the signs of the end times and if you look at society okay how twisted and how perverted it's becoming as it says in isaiah 5 20 woe unto them that call evil good and good evil well today good is evil and evil is good in the eyes of man and how they're pushing all this stuff and then it also says that put darkness for light and light for darkness well, you see how they're attacking the faith-based people, how they attack the Christian, how they attack good people, even if they're not Christians, people who are decent, moral people, how they're attacking them and shaming them. If you don't follow us, if you don't believe in this, then you're trans this, you're homo this, you're, you know, all, all these phobias that you have. They, they're trying to guilt the people. So that's the other thing. They're putting light for darkness and darkness for light. And that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We see how this is, guys. We see how the world is going, how it's upside down. And I don't have to tell you. I don't have to tell you about all the signs and everything that's going on. Um, but, you know, is the world coming to an end? Um, I say no, not yet. And the main reason I say no, not yet is because we're still here. The church is still here. And I said, oh, I said to my wife yesterday. <laughs> I said, you see all these news reports that are coming out about uh, UFOs and the aliens and how now all of a sudden not just the US governments but all these governments around the world are supposedly have encountered UFOs something they've been hiding keeping secret for such a long time um, but they're now they're coming out and they're saying we have aircrafts and we have aliens and we have this and we have that well many people in the faith-based community in the Christian in the body of Christ many especially those Bible prophecy teachers a lot of them believe that after the rapture, that the people that are left behind, the leaders that are left behind, are going to tell the people, look, they were abducted by those aliens. See, we knew there was aliens. We have proof that they've been aliens, and they took all these people. Well, if you're a non-believer and <laughs> your loved one who was a believer disappeared, chances are it was no alien. Chances are it was the rapture. And for those of you who are believers... Tell you your unbelieving family members the same thing. Hey, if I go missing, I didn't I didn't commit suicide or disappear or an alien didn't take me. It was the Lord took me. So it's very important. So anyway, um as the day approaches, is the day approaching? I don't know. Uh, all I know is I put my faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. And um whenever that day comes, it comes. But until that time, we continue. We continue to share the gospel because even if, if we're out of here tomorrow and if you spoke to one person today and they surrendered their heart to the Lord, that's one less soul that's going to be left behind. Or if it's a year from now or 10 years from now, that much, that's how much more time we have to fulfill that. And um, if I get time, maybe sometime this week, I want to, I want to, I read something on the fullness of the Gentiles. And it was a beautiful article and I think I want to post a video on that because it was, it was like very powerful. So anyway. Let me finish this video because I'm going to go to record my next video, which is a very touching story that I want to share with you guys. Uh, touching and eye-opening. And I think this story is more for the unbeliever than for the believers because you guys know how the Lord works. Um, they don't. So anyway, God bless you and have a nice day.